Aida for refusing to help my HS bully with his medical bills? Repost to comply with rules. Hi everyone, when I, 33 meters, was younger, I was not the most popular kid in class. I did the musicals and academic subjects. I wasn't much of a sportsperson and not really very social. Toward the end of HS, I made quite a few friends and it got easier. But one of the popular kids, let's call him Jake, constantly taunted me for my ethnicity, my body, my nerdiness, and what have you. I have never forgotten it and constantly resented him for it. Fast forward 15 years. Jake has done something very stupid and immature, and as a result, he has been in a coma for several years. I left my country when I graduated uni, and now live in a major city abroad earning a pretty significant sum. I'm known. In my field, and everyone I went to school with is aware of this. Quite frankly, the fat musical kid ended up the most successful graduate of his class. For many years, the parents and friends of Jake paid his medical bills to keep him on a ventilator. I never really sympathized to be honest, and kind of thought he had it coming. Anyway, an old friend messages me the other day telling me that the GoFundMe is finished, and that the parents are almost bankrupt, and everyone would appreciate a teeth maybe I could kick 20 to 30k toward his medical bills. I laughed and said, absolutely not, I work for my money and the last thing I want to do with it is give it to the person who made my last year at school a misery. Now I am being told I'm a selfish a asterisk hole for not helping because, clearly I can afford it. This is despite the person asking knowing that I was merciless sly bullied by Jake. I kinda see it as karma. I've made it in life and don't want to share the spoils with people who tried to belittle me. So Reddit, Aida, and hash x200b. Edit. For all of you wonderful people suggesting. Therapy I appreciate you. But I'm not that kid anymore, I'm a successful professional, married tone amazing woman, with a beautiful daughter. I haven't thought about Jake for many years. Not since I saw the articles in the newspaper about his calamity. I am certain I needed therapy back then but I've matured and come into my own since that time. I'm happy, healthy and satisfied. I love my life, I love my family, but most importantly, I love myself too. I don't dwell on the past, but when somebody calls you for 20 to 30 grand, memories can come back to you very quickly. Second edit, wow. Thank you to all the amazing people who have helped me feel a little less hitty this evening. I am trying to reply to everyone and I'm sorry I have not published exactly why, Jake is in a coma but I am trying to reply to DM's that ask. This community is amazing, I felt really hitty today and all of you have done so much to make me feel better about it all. Thank you T-H-A-N-K-Y-O-U thank you. XXX. Aida for not hosting my daughter's best friend for dinner anymore? My daughter has a best friend who, for the purpose of post, we will call Beth, both 8F. Some relevant background. I don't make kids food for my kids. They are expected to eat what I have made for dinner, which is often not food that would be considered kid friendly. As a result, my kids have a wide palate and enjoy eating a variety of foods. My son's favorite food is grilled octopus, while my daughter's is pasta with sea urchin. Of course, there are things they don't like and I don't force them to eat those things. But, as a general rule, they have to eat what is available to them. Beth exclusively eats kids' food. Her family has two separate meals every night, something for the parents and something more kid-friendly for the kids, e.g. chicken nuggets, pizza with no sauce, etc. Beth is extremely picky. My daughter and Beth hang out almost every weekend. The first time Beth was over for dinner, I had made roasted chicken. Beth's parents hadn't given me a heads up about her preferences. She refused to eat the chicken and asked for goldfish crackers instead. The next few times, I tried my best to accommodate Beth's preferences, but there was always something wrong with what I made and Beth would refuse to eat it. For example, I made a pasta dish for my family and served Beth plain pasta because she doesn't like sauce of any kind. She still refused to eat, because I had made penne and Beth only eats farfalle. I have gotten fed up with Beth's pickiness and have started to arrange the girls' playdates so that they end before dinner time. Beth's parents noticed and asked why I never host Beth for dinner anymore. I explained that I couldn't cater to her food preferences. They asked why I can't just keep chicken nuggets in my freezer and make them for her when she's over for dinner. I told them that I wouldn't do that because I don't want to teach my kids that it's okay to request something different than what they're being served. Beth's parents had some choice words for me after that and are apparently considering not letting Beth hang out with my daughter anymore. Aida, 
Apologies for any errors, I am using voice to text. Aida for pulling out of my sister's wedding due to her in-laws. For background, Stella and I are identical twins, 29F and we will both be 30 when her wedding comes around this fall. I had her as my maid of honor 8 years ago and she promised me that I could be hers when her wedding came around. I have two kids, 6F and 3F. They're the flower girls. My marriage fell apart just over 2 years ago, duetto a stillbirth and my husband's infidelity. My parents and sister were the only reason I didn't drown from the stress, loneliness, and total abandonment of my spouse. I was a total mess. I went to therapy, got diagnosed with bipolar disorder and depression, quit drinking, and I owe a lot of it to my amazing sister. She's the reason why I kept chasing down my ex for child support when he stopped suddenly paying, he suddenly switched from world's best dad to deadbeat dumbass so quickly that my ex mill is disgusted with him. Stella and John 35M engaged last year. His parents are a paying about 60% of the wedding. Our parents are a paying 30% Stella and John paying for the rest themselves. The biggest caveat is that they must be married in. John's family's church, full mass with communion. The family is on board because this is going to be very big wedding. Tonight, Stella had invited me to dinner, as they had finally reserved a date for the church and reception, assuming it was to formally ask me to be her mo. I was excited since I haven't been in a wedding party aside from my own wedding. John was with her, weird because Stella didn't mention him coming at all in our texts about the dinner. We hugged like usual but John didn't, weirder. After we got our drinks, they got to it. In a nutshell, John expressed the following, despite my best efforts to keep it secret, my parents found out that you're divorced when they asked why your husband wasn't coming. They are no longer comfortable with you as Mo, because it won't look good to the church if my family hears about the divorce. You can be a bridesmaid but can't menti on the divorce or your conditions at all during the wedding events. I was stunned, and I felt tears in my eyes. Stella started crying too and she tried to spin it in a good way. This is way less stressful for you, Swa's a good thing. Mill has already approved my BF Fa's my Mo, so please don't make this any harder, I knew that I couldn't possibly stay there through an entire meal. I had to process this new info alone. I didn't speak. I just paid for my wickedly expensive cocktail, and left to order an Uber home. A few hours ago, I texted Stella that I would not be in her wedding party at all. That was my decision. I wouldn't pull my daughters out, but I would only attend as a guest. She wouldn't take this as an answer, so I had totem block her due to her excessive texts and calls. I sent my parents a summary of what happened and promised to call them when I was in better shape tomorrow. Stella thinks that this is a total overreaction. I don't even want to know what John thinks at this point, please help me. Aida? Edit. Thank you for all the responses. I half expected to be told to just put up with it and be Applin bridesmaid, which while difficult I kinda would have forced myself to just to make Stella. Happy. I was just so blindsided and I feel like I've been gut punched, and I do need to be told I if I am overreacting in a big way sometimes. I'm going to fall asleep now while binging friends and wonder if my twin has suddenly become an Ursula instead of Phoebe. Edit 2, wow. I did not expect this to blow up. I can't thank everyone enough for their input. I have a call scheduled with my parents this afternoon, from what I gathered, they are extremely upset with Stella and John at the moment. Depending on how that goes, I will talk to my girls about doing something big and fun instead. The more I think about it, sitting through a mass sounds less and less appealing. I'm not even religious, and I saw this query in the comments. Yes, I had. A cocktail with no alcohol. I use the word mocktail but I guess its meaning is still lost to some people. Next when I asked for a list of mocktails, last night, the server was a little condescending about it and said they're still called cocktails if they are not alcoholic. Aita, baby name, taken? I had my first daughter in 2015, named her a name I loved, Carter. With the thought always in the back of my mind that my next daughter's name would be Cameron and I loved the names together. This was never a secret to friends and family. Fast forward to 2022, finally get pregnant and told close family right away. About four-fifths days later my SIL, brother's wife, also finds out she is pregnant. Early on in this realization my husband texts kind of comically, in a group chat that we have with him, myself, my brother and my sil. He says, just don't use the name Cameron, she's loved that name for years, to which my brother doesn't reply and may have not even read it as he tends to do that sometimes. My sill replies, we're staying out of this, we have our names picked already. Moving on, a few weeks later I have a missed miscarriage at 11 weeks. 
My SIL's entire pregnancy they mentioned three to four names that they liked for a boy if that's what they were having and never once was Cameron mentioned. Eventh day before her scheduled C-section they were still torn between two entirely different names. The day after their baby is born, they announce that they use the name Cameron. Not only was I entirely blindsided but felt disrespected and that my feelings didn't matter. I can have assumed their thought process was, well she didn't end up having a baby so we can use the name, and never told our mutual family their plan before their baby was born because they knew my parents would say something to them, knowing I had loved that name for quite some years. While I understand you can't reserve a name, couldn't they have picked literally anything else? One of the names they talked about for months. I now have had no contact with them and have no interest in reconciling with my sill, as I previously thought of her as a best friend and now see her true colors. My husband and I haven't met. Their baby and unfortunately I have no interest because all I feel is resentment. It's been about two months, am I the SS hole?